So this is a pretty hilarious story. There is this gathering called Davos where basically a bunch of rich people go there and they convene. And Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has been making such an impact on public discourse and just, you know, conversation, publicly speaking, about policy um, that even those, you know, rich people are now getting scared slash laughing at, you know, what she's talking about because obviously they're rich. They don't want you to come for their money, and they are a bunch of, you know, greedy, selfish, you know, D-bags. There's no other way to put that. Now, here's something interesting. So this article reads, Billionaires in Davos hate Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's 70% tax on the rich. Now, of course, she has proposed a 70% marginal tax rate on dollars made after $10 million. So make $10 million in one, that $1 is taxed at 70%. Seems pretty rational to me. Now, here is what happened. So, this is what the article says. Okay, it says, When billionaire chief executive Michael Dell was asked on Wednesday whether he would support a proposal put forth by Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to tax millionaires at a 70% tax rate on income exceeding $10 million, the audience for a Davos panel about tech and global inequality burst into laughter before he could answer. That's right. They burst into laughter. So all these ex insanely rich and wealthy people who are these plutocrats, essentially, you know, they derive their power from their wealth and they so stuck up assholes and, you know, think that they're all that and they're the shit and, oh, you know, you taxing? Oh, what? I want to keep my cash. So if there was anything that made me feel more in favor of this, it's that. It's them laughing. It's them you know, taking it as a joke. If you want to, like, if you finna act like that, like, let's go 80. Let's go 80. Let's go 90. Like, how much do you want it at, bro? Because you're clearly not getting the message here. People are tired of being used by rich people. People are tired of, you know, laborers not getting actual compensation and the capitalist class essentially just profiting off of the backbreaking labor of laborers and the insane wealth inequality, it, it's it's utterly ridiculous, man. I mean, we talked about Jeff Bezos quite a bit. I mean, the dude's insanely rich. Now, here's what it, what it also says. It says, Dell, founder and head of Dell Technologies, first responded by saying he's more comfortable allocating significant resources through his private foundation than handing over money to the government, but then he answered more directly, quote, no. I'm not supportive of that, and I don't think it would help the growth of the U.S. economy. Um, and so, first of all, I want to say Dell computers, ass, don't buy them. I don't, um, I used to have like a hand-me-down Dell, but the computer was ass too. Just shitty brand, don't buy them. Um, but here is what's interesting about this. So we're going to get into a little topic of philanthropy in here as well. But here's what it says. It says, when Dell was asked to explain why he thinks that, he said... Name a country why that's worked, ever. So, the implication here is, A, I mean, just straight up implication of like, oh, it's socialism slash communism. The other thing is, a total lack of knowledge that for decades, until Reagan, basically, we had, under Dwight D. Eisenhower, a 90% top marginal tax rate in place. So, when you ask when that worked, and we had extremely um, prosperous economic growth at that time and you don't even know but yet you're giving your opinion on this because you're a plutocrat is what you are um it's insane and here's what happened it says co-panelist and mit professor eric i don't know how to say his last name jumped in to offer an answer the united states oof i mean that three word beat down right there and as soon as you see that you go wow we're supposed to take your opinion seriously on this because you have a lot of money, but the truth is you don't know what you're talking about. You don't even know that we had super high marginal tax rates until Reagan. And this is why I'm so glad that AOC has proposed this because not only has the discourse shifted in the United States of America, but on top of that, people are now being educated on A, what marginal tax rates are, and B, what they were previously 
so we can put it into context so that people don't go, oh, you know, A, a lot of people who are either misinformed or just being disingenuous will go, oh, that's, you know, that's socialism. But you say, oh, no, it's money made after $10 million, not your entire income is being taxed at 70%. And then there's the other thing of, oh, like, it, as if it's unprecedented. And not only uh, not only is it precedented, it's insanely precedented, dude. It's ridiculous. Until Reagan came in, it was very well precedented that we had very high marginal tax rates for a long time. Now, here is the second part that we're going to get into. Now, Bill Gates, who's looked at as this philanthropic hero, um, is going to talk about the debate between sort of there's this debate, which I think is an extremely important one I want to uh, jump in on, is, you know, does philanthropy really do anything in terms of, okay, you're insanely rich, now you're doing some philanthropy, but is that really compensating for all of the uh, money that you're taking from the laborers who are actually producing things? So go ahead and check out this video. I want you guys to see this. Uh, here's a somewhat more critical question from Anand Giridatas, who's, who's written a book called Winner Take All. He's, what do you think of the rising chorus, that the rising chorus of philanthropy's critics get right? There's, there's people who, who feel, and Anand argues, that, that for many, philanthropy is a way of not really changing, changing the fundamental system, but a way of making us kind of feel better. And, and perpetuating inequalities. Well, the I, if people think you know communism works better or something, I don't know. Uh, the to me, the system could constantly be detuned. And I'm a believer in an estate tax. I'm a believer in more progressive taxation. Uh, you know, I think we have a system that works, but we can tune it to achieve more equality. Things like the earned income tax credit should be made substantially more generous. The people who suggest there's an alternate system, I'll just respectfully disagree with them, that some radically different system would both create good things uh, and give us the wealth that we should spread in a more equal way. Right, so as you guys just saw there, Bill Gates immediately takes this sort of implication as communism. Now, here's the problem I have with that statement. Now, I'm not a communist or a socialist. Definitely not a communist at all. Um, and even socialist, you know, I, I favor worker co-ops, but I don't believe in a system that mandates worker co-ops. And also, I think that there are a lot of benefits that come with market economies. But here's the thing, okay? And I looked up his exact number for what his net worth was yesterday it was at 96.4 billion dollars now let's keep this in context right bill gates is looked at as this phil philanthropic hero and i'll give you an example i remember looking at there are always these articles that come out that highlight the mass wealth inequality in the united states and also in the world and I remember there being one with a bunch of billionaires on there and a, b a bunch of people responding by saying, oh, well, why is Bill Gates grouped in there? You know, he's done a lot to help people. And here's the thing about I don't give a shit about what kind of philanthropy you're doing because it's a sad, weak, embarrassing attempt to override the horrible thing that you've done, which is the taking of what has been produced by the laborer for yourself. If you were really a good person, by the way, this is something I didn't know until uh, recently when I was reading up, uh, on Jeff Bezos, I was reading an article about that, and it talked about how Bill Gates was in the same position as Jeff Bezos before he retired, where he was this insanely wealthy person and he wasn't giving shit away. And I think someone like his mom or something like that was disappointed in him for that or something like that. So... People look at him as this philanthropic hero. Guys, it's not like he gave away, like, almost all of his wealth and now he's just chilling on, like, even, like, a, having, like, a, I don't know, a fucking net worth of $10 billion. Not even close, guys. His net worth is still $96.4 billion. So, this guy is worth almost $100 billion and you look at him as this philanthropic hero. That does not override any of 
the suffering and shittiness that is caused by this exploitative uh, taking of the money that is earned by the laborer. So if you really want to be a good human being, pay your workers uh, not even just a living wage. Pay them a good wage. Fuck a living wage. If you're that rich, pay them a decent wage. Forget a living wage. A living wage should be a no-brainer. It's not even a part of the conversation. Give them a good wage. Give them a decent wage. Give them a humane wage. Give them a humane one, okay? If you want to be a, a good person, don't try and do your philanthropy to re, you know, re up your image. That's what Carnegie and Rockefeller did. You know, you got Carnegie Hall and you've got um all the shit that Rockefeller gave away. Well, Rockefeller's employees were being treated like shit. I mean, the homestead strikes and all those things going on. Um, and I think the homestead strike, I can't remember if that had to do with Rockefeller's business or Carnegie's, but anyways, the point here being in my opinion, the philanthropy does not cancel out the horrible things that they have done in A, you know, instead of actually compensating the labor for what they've done through their backbreaking labor, and B, there are societal consequences of extreme wealth inequality, and those are proven by studies. Extreme mass wealth inequality is a negative upon society. Now, I'm not, and I would venture to say most people are not. There, while there are some commies on Twitter with hammers and sickles maybe saying that everyone should make the same, although even that I kind of doubt. But there's no way, like, people like to frame this in a stupid way where they go, oh, um, I did a poll and some, there were a few people who were like, oh, like, Oh, why are you trying to punish someone from being successful or something like that? It's like, what? Dude, how can we allow someone to have that much fucking money? It's not healthy for society. And the thing I always say, too, is why would a capitalist even support that? What you're doing is you're driving the death and inevitable end of capitalism to support such wealth hoarding and such wealth concentration among such a small amount of people because... People are going to get pissed off. People are going to be leading, you know, to fucking revolt. You can't have that much. You know, even Sam Harris said that. And it's just, it's just such, I don't understand why he's, like, what has Bill Gates done to earn all of that money? Like, what has he, like, is he doing a lot of shit every day to make all that money? Or is it just the stocks rising every day because of the labor of people who are, not being legitimately, you know, compensated. So, anyways, I hate those stuck-up billionaires who laugh at the idea of a 70% marginal tax rate. I find it insane, and it motivates me more to be like, oh, so you guys are laughing at a 70% marginal tax rate over $10 million a year. Well, that shit just went up to 80 Oh, shit. Sorry about that, dude. Are you going to laugh at that? All right. Maybe we have to go 90, right? Like, these fuckers don't get it. They don't get it. These people are so stuck up and full of their, like, smell. I don't even know. It's just, I can't, I can't even comprehend it, man. I can't comprehend it. And it's, it's absolutely insane what is going on. But let me know your thoughts on this whole thing down below.